You're listening to the Believe in Giants podcast with Giants legend Carl Banks and broadcaster Bob Papa. Welcome to another edition of Believe in Giants. Bob Papa with two-time Super Bowl champion Carl Banks. The Giants are in Dallas this weekend to take on the Cowboys. And the Tommy DeVito era begins. How long it'll last, we don't know. But Carl, in life, and especially in the National Football League, if you get an opportunity, now it's time to go take advantage of it. Yeah, it is. And um, I think, you know, the kid's excited about playing. And he kind of settled in uh, last Sunday and was able to make a few plays. But, you know, the interesting thing about DeVito is – you know, this is his first w- real week of taking snaps in practice as a starting quarterback. So uh, just given the fact that he had been, you know, thrust into duty without really much um, first team reps tells you, you know, he, he can do he can do a lot better with the reps. So I'm excited to see him out there. Yeah, you know, and and one of the things that we talked about during training camp you know, doing the telecast and being at training camp was, I think, for, you know, f- for years, the Giants have kind of rotated through a whole bunch of these third string quarterbacks that, mm-hmm. you know, couldn't play really at all. They come in the game, they can't function. Um, we liked what we saw in training camp. We liked what we saw in the preseason games. Um, now, look, he's going against one of the best defenses in the NFL, the Dallas Cowboys this week. But, right. Uh, you're you're 100 right. I think there's something there, and and these next couple of weeks could define the rest of his life because if he performs well, he's going to be employable either with the Giants or by another team in this kind of backup role. And the next thing you know, you could have yourself a 10 year career in the league doing this. Yeah, and, and obviously that's his goal, Bob. So um, let's see what happens in Dallas. I don't think the moment's going to be too big for him. I think he he will get out there and do his best. And, you know, it's not Tommy DeVito who has to beat the Dallas Cowboys. It's going to take a Herculean effort by everyone. It's so interesting. I was talking about Herculean efforts. I was in a restaurant here in New Jersey and someone said, you know, the offensive line and Tommy are upstairs. So I go upstairs and I says, Hey, I kind of lost my wallet. Can you guys pick up the tab for Uh me? (laughs) But, um, they were all up there, and you know Tommy has taken the role that uh, Daniel played. Daniel Jones played in the tradition of of having dinner with the offensive linemen and bonding. So that was good. You know, I I, I just think uh, this offensive line will have to fare better uh, this game than they did the last game against Dallas. Right? So just can't let them jump out and just do what they want. So did they pick up your tab? No, I was just teasing, <laughs> you know, but they, they all, the funny thing is they all pointed to Andrew Thomas, Justin Pugh was like, here, sit down and eat some sushi with us. They had like, the table was full of food and he's like, no, you sit down and eat. But I was like, no, 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 I'm downstairs. I got a message for our fans out there. Football's back. Bet online's your number one information source for all your sports wagering info with up to the minute stats, news scores, and matchup breakdowns. Get the latest game odds, spreads, and totals from the NFL and college football at your fingertips with Bet Online's real time updates on stats, news, and odds. From week one all the way to the college football playoffs and Super Bowl, Bet Online is going to give you access to the best football promotions and contests available anywhere online. So head to the website today or use your mobile device. Get in on. Yeah, well, well, you you would. I, I, I hope they're not making DeVito pay. No, no, no. They were pointing. They were pointing agent. at. Uh, they were pointing at Andrew Thomas, and I was. T- I was telling the John Michael Smith, and JMS, can you get my? Can you get my drink at least?" And he just starts laughing. <laughs> They're good group kids. Yeah. So you're right. It's going to take collective. Um, you know, and try to get Saquon going. Take a little pressure off Devito. Mm-hmm. Look, other than Waller, they got all their weapons. Their offensive line is relatively healthy. I doubt Evan Neal is going to play. I mean, he really hasn't practiced because of that ankle injury. But Yeah, he's got a walking boot on. Well, then he's, he's not playing. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, Tyree Phillips is uh, has done a very nice job since the Giants brought him back. Let's see where the chips fall on this thing. 
I'm excited to see it happen. I am too. Um, I think a big part uh, in this Herculean effort to try to upset the Dallas Cowboys is going to fall on the, the shoulders of the defense. This giant defense has to be able to pressure the quarterback, but they're going to have they're going to have their hands full uh, in some coverage responsibilities. Just the way they're using CD Lamb right now, he went for almost 200 yards last week, or he may have gone for 200 yards. Uh, working out of the slot, he has been a pretty dangerous wide receiver. So um, we'll see if Wink gets this defense back on track. Um, interesting to see how Xavier McKinney uh, responds to having the spotlight put on him, and it's not been in a favorable way. Um, I think he's a – now say it over and over again. He's a great character kid. He's a good football player. Um, but he, according to Wink Martindale, did, you know, did himself no favors – with uh, his his comments after the game. So um, they seem to have a, a very open relationship uh, with their coach and able to say whatever it is that they need to say. And the fact that it wasn't said um, probably upset some people. Well, I know it upset some people. So um, we'll see how he responds to that. He's got He's got to play a role in this game as well. Yeah, Wink was pretty straightforward in his comments yesterday, saying never in his career has he experienced something like that. They had their individual meeting, and then they had their discussion as a group. Water under the bridge at this point. Um, and McKinney's got to play. McKinney doesn't have a contract. He's got to up his yeah. game. He's got he's got to up it. They need him to be a difference maker, like we thought he was going to be in other parts of his career. Um, and he's one of the guys that they're counting on to be a difference maker, be a disruptor, a disrupting player back there. So the ball's in his court. He just created a bigger spotlight on himself, but the ball and, is now in his court. Yeah, and that might that might be well, it is what's needed. You know, um he hasn't made a lot of plays. He's playing center field while everybody else blitzes. He's got a, you know. Mind the mind the house, if you will, and uh, I'm sure that's you know he's looking at all the other stuff, and he's back there not in the action, but it's because he's the guy that they need back there, and takes a team effort. I I do um, I do believe that they've got to. I know for a fact they've got to create a turnover on defense. They've got to be good on special teams. Um, in order to be competitive in this game. Look, you know, you got always got a puncher's chance. Everybody has to show up and play on Sunday, both sides of the football, both teams, and um, you see what happens. But, I, you know, you put a game plan together, um, don't make mistakes, put pressure on Dallas to do everything right um, because they're good enough to overcome their mistakes. The Giants are not. But if the Giants put their game plan together, keep this game close, then you'll start to, you know, force Dallas into some some possible mistakes. Yeah, if you remember Thanksgiving last year, the Giants went down there with how many starters out of the lineup? I, th I think they were down a total of like 11 starters. Yeah, yep. And remember, it was a third quarter, Daniel Jones, fourth down, Poor throw, Barkley not securing a catch. The Giants were right in that game. Yep. So now, look, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Dallas has won 11 straight at home, mm -hmm. which is the second longest home winning streak in franchise history. And at home over this 11 game streak, they average 37 points a game. They give up 11. They're plus seven in the turnover ratio. They've held their opponents to under 70 yards rushing and 250 yards of offense and 25% on third downs. So they are a different team at home yeah. than they are away, although they played great in Philly. And this, I got the C.D. Lamb stat for you, which is really it's kind of mind-blowing mm -hmm. a little bit. 
He set a career high in receiving yards in each of his last two games. He had 158 against the Rams and 191 at Philly last week. He's gone back-to-back games with 10 or more catches and over 150 yards, only the ninth player since the merger to do it. And if he was to do it again on Sunday against the Giants, he'd become the first player since the merger to do that in three straight games. So he's playing like lights. Is it because they're moving him? As you pointed well, out, yeah, and, and well, it's the fact that they're moving him in the slot, but he has more route options out of the slot, and he's a really good route runner. And so, we run him on some crossing routes, some option routes, and some double move stuff, and he's, you know, he he can get open. So, it definitely makes a difference where he lines up, and if he's in the slot, it's you know guy like uh, Deontay Banks or um, I don't know who they're going to have in the slot, maybe Cordell Flott. They've got to play really, really sound defense, really sound defense, or else, you know, you'll start seeing big play after big play, and that's not what you want. How do you think they'll coach – Flot or ban whoever whoever is on him. Like, what's in from a defensive standpoint in your brain? What's one of the better ways to deal with a guy that's good out of that position? Well, you you probably want to deal with him more vertically than uh, horizontally when he can run crossing routes when he can put double moves on you. So um, maybe you do a little zone defense in there to keep. You know, somebody in the middle of the field in in, in the intermediate area. Um, but you're not going to have – you can't give him a two-way go. You can't do what Deontay Banks did in Oakland and just stand there straight-legged and let a guy off the line of scrimmage because that's not – number one, that's not um, what we've seen from Deontay Banks up until that, that Raider game. And so he's got to get back to fundamentals, playing physical at the line of scrimmage. Um that's part and parcel why you see um, C.D. Lamb having the success that he has. People are not playing him physical. And I think him being in the slot, him being in motion a little bit, helps to, helps him get away from the physicality at the line of scrimmage. What do you think? I mean, Dable's saying all the right things. The team's 2-7. and seven. Uh, they're down to their third string quarterback and God forbid if something happens to DeVito, then Barkley would have to come in because Tyrod Taylor is not ready to come off the injured reserve yet. Mm -hmm. Um, What do you, the messaging has been such that, you know, business as usual, we got to keep improving every week. This is a tall order, a Herculean effort. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you think Dable is looking for out of these players this week? Execution, Bob. Execution. Give yourself a chance. Um, Again, more games are lost than won in this league. Um, And they have to give themselves a chance. That means no false start penalties, uh, no self-inflicted procedural calls, um, tackle well, no mental errors up front. Like, you know, find where Michael Parsons is. You kind of had a taste of how they like to use him in that first game of the season. And now it's just time. You know, just know who you have to block. Half the battle is knowing who you have to block. Your quarterback can move around a little bit to avoid some stuff as long as you're not turning guys 100% loose. You think the Giants will try to get – uh They'll try to get DeVito sort of on the move a little bit where you got some boots and some rollouts and stuff like that to just help That's possible. the offensive line. I think they're gonna I think they're gonna use every tool he has um to get him, you know, successful in the offense, to get the offense going. So yeah, they ran some RPO stuff with him uh in the Jets game. Um but they have to get – in order for him to have the effectiveness, they've got to get the running game going. Um, and I'll say this week in and week out, the Giants have to be intentional about getting Jalen Hyatt the football. 
They have to be intentional because well, they were last week. The quarterback missed them. And they have to continue. And, you know, the thing about that is that these quarterbacks haven't had a lot of time to really work with him, meaning um, Jalen Hyatt in game situations, right? Quarterback, uh, when he's available, hit him. When he came back, he didn't. And then it's been kind of touch and go. He, you know, what quarterbacks out there? Are they going to see him? Are they going to get him the ball when he's open? Or are they going to wait until these obvious times? Like, he was open a couple times last week. They missed him. Go back to it. Because the other teams are seeing that. And you got to take your shot with him to open up the rest of the field to the receivers. Dak's been playing pretty good. Um, Mm -hmm. He had his fourth 350-yard game with three or more touchdowns and no picks. Um and he's lights out at home. What when you studied the tape, what have you seen in his game that has him being so effective? Uh consistency. Consistency. He's not he's not a risk taker. I think their offense uh is now in a place where even though their run game isn't as potent as it used to be, um, Dak Prescott is making great decisions with the football. He doesn't take risks. Never had he's never had to take risk maybe but once this year, this season. Um, But it's just the way their offense is running. And obviously, having C.D. Lamb available out of the slot helps him. They're using their tight end effectively, and they're staying on schedule, you know, and he can take shots when he wants to. And obviously, you know, Dak's a mobile quarterback too. So um, they're using all of his skill set, but they're using it within the rhythm of the offense. They, he has not taken a lot of big chances and has not had to. Yeah, I mean, and look, he's beaten the Giants 11 straight times. They beat him twice his rookie season in 2016, and since then he's won 11 in a row against them. They've mm-hmm. they've owned the Giants. They've won 12 of the last 13 against them. And you're right, it's, it's going to be a Herculean effort for this football team to – try to figure out a way to win. But you know how it goes in the NFL, right? If you extend the game and you muddy the game against a team that's heavily favored, they get tight, the fans get on them, and suddenly you can get the energy going your way, and then there's going to be that opportunity. If you can get the game to that point, then there's going to be an opportunity to make a play, and you can't drop that pick. You can't not recover that fumble. Right. You can't drop a, an important third and six on a slant that's dialed up and you're open and the quarterback puts it right on you. You can't get, you can't fail on that third and a yard and a half. Like they're going to have to be perfect once they get the game muddied in yeah. order to have a chance to win. And look, this is, here's the, the other part of it too. And this holds true in every NFL game. The other team has talent too. The Giants have talent. There's talent in some key places. It's not like um, they're they're fielding a group of players with no no talent at certain positions. We just talked about uh, Jalen Hyatt. They will have to deal with Wondell Robinson. They will have to deal with um, Saquon Barkley. So there there are things that Dallas will have to be on their their uh, toes with as well. Yeah, it's it's the NFL. They're all paid professionals that have gone yeah. through the funnel to make it to the NFL through drafting or free agency. It's not yeah. like it's not like these college teams that schedule these games either early in the season or at the midway point of the season, like a take a breath game, and it's a financial game for the team that they bring in. Homecoming. Yeah, they bring them a hundred and you know one point five million. Why don't you come play here at? Uh, yeah. Georgia or something like that, and there's not one dude on the team that would have been recruited by Georgia. This is the yeah. NFL. Everybody's made it in the NFL. Right. right. It's not you. you, you and what the Giants do have to avoid though is being the homecoming team for everybody. You know, the homecoming game where it's mm-hmm. you know the one that they can't. They have to avoid being homecoming uh, for for all of these teams. Um, you know, and I, I don't talk too much about the future and the draft and all of those things. And, you know, I overheard some people talking about where the Giants are going to be picking in the draft and who's going to be available. 
um, I'll say this, don't disappoint yourself. They're going to play hard and don't be shocked if the Giants win themselves out of the, out of the spot that you think they're going to be in. You know, I, I don't think they're going to finish this game with this season with two wins. Um, they have too many people that care, too many coaches that care. Um, and there is no, there's no way that they're going to look to tank this season. They're going to win as many games as they can. And, uh, wherever that lands them in the draft, they'll pick the right player. But um, don't get too caught up right now, folks. Well, there's jobs on the line. Yeah, you know, everyone everyone talks about like, oh, they can't win. They gotta. Well, how'd you like to be the position coach that maybe is under fire? How'd you like to be the head coach that's going to be under fire from management if you finish? I'm just hypothetically throwing two and fifteen. Yeah, and they come in and in your end of the season meeting say, okay, what are you going to do to fix it? What changes are you going to make? Can't yep. go back with so there's jo- and then the players, these guys are playing yep. for their careers. Yeah, so so don't be shocked if they're not where you think they're going to be, and don't be mad at them because they win football games. Um, there are no guarantees in um, this league. So you go out and you play your best and you try to win football games and wherever you land at the end of the year, you land at the end of the year and that's where you pick. Yeah, it's one of the great uh, media fan um, fallacies. Yeah. Uh, Now, listen, there is tanking that goes on in in sports, Mm -hmm. different sports. This sport is a little bit different. First of all, uh, you know, it's a 53-man roster with practice squad. It's a big group of people, and there's a big group yeah. of people that are that are doing this job and not getting or not rich. Yeah. They're not. Yeah. Uh, they're not. They don't play in a league that has guaranteed contracts for the most part. And there's a lot of there's a big percentage of the guys on the team that don't have guarantee. The word tank doesn't equate because what you're asking me to not play my best so I can get released and have crappy football on tape. And one of the 30 other one, uh, 31 other teams isn't going to pick me up because I played like garbage to make sure that our team got a better draft pick and I'm out of the league. And somebody, yeah, and somebody comes in and takes my spot, or um, you have a coach who, you know, Everybody will be saying he should tank, he should tank. And then at the end, you'll look at his record and say, oh, why Why did they hire this guy? His record overall, he lost He lost eight in a row in 2023. Like, that. that I mean, you can't have it both ways. So um, it's a fun exercise that people are going through right now. But, you know, don't be shocked if the Giants win themselves out of, you know, where you think they should be. Man, if you believe in in who's who they got running the operation, and this is year two of this new regime, and I think everybody's still encouraged by what they're the the mindset mm-hmm. and the approach toward it. You just trust that wherever they wind up. Look at two and seven. This we live in a world of analytics. At two and seven with a trip to Dallas this week, the probabilities are the Giants will draft somewhere in the top ten. Mm-hmm. Right. So they're going to be somewhere in the I mean, I think I saw the percentages at this point. It's like ninety nine point six percent that they're going to have a top 10 pick when you're two and seven through your first nine games and you played more than you have left. And you've played to a level that got you to two and seven can get under. But worry about that stuff in the spring. They'll have some draft collateral. If They need to move up. They need to whatever they need to do. But that's a conversation for another day. Yeah. Draft conversation and draft position at this point doesn't really matter. And then the other thing is the names that are being thrown around now as the top guys as far as, let's just say, the quarterback position. How many times have we seen this where by the time the college football season ends and then we get to the offseason all-star games and everything else, the projections change? Yeah. Last year at this time, there was nobody talking about Anthony Richardson being a high first round draft pick. And then as the offseason went and the workouts went, 
he wound yep. up being a top five pick. But a year ago, right now, there were, and I remember watching a Florida game with a bunch of friends who are Florida fans, and like this guy Richardson, he stinks. Like, yeah, yeah, he went in the top five. So that, yep. that's all so, I got. Yeah, same here. Um, can I can I see, ask you one more thing? Yeah, sure. Last week you threw out the the gauntlet, the challenge about old school NHL starter stuff. Oh my gosh, yes. We got to go so, cuz we got to talk about your brand as the owner of the starter brand uh-huh. and you got this uh what is it what's it Ice Series? No, Black Ice Series. Black Ice, yep. Black Ice Series. Yep. So you've designed and you have a whole clothing line coming out mm-hmm. of starter NHL stuff because you're involved with uh obviously the stuff that's going to be at MetLife Stadium. When they yep. have the Rangers, Islanders, Devils, and well, Flyers that's all the playing. yes, that is the um, Stadium Series, which is an extension of the Winter Classic. So uh, that's in February. They have um, Flyers, Devils, Islanders, Rangers, round robin. But um, November 29th, um, we launch. We officially launched the Black Ice Series at the NHL store here in New York. Um, but Bob, and when I threw out the gauntlet, I had several people reach out with their vintage NHL stuff. So I have G Money. I got uh, Laura O'Keefe. I've got Craig, H-O-E-F underscore C. I've got Laura O'Keefe sent me a couple things. Adriana LaFola. I got Jason Malika. I got MW, which is Mikey Well. He's got a heart for Whalers. Incredible piece. Oh, my God. I saw um, Rocco De Palma. He's got New Jersey Devils. Um, pullover. So I threw out the gauntlet, and I'm going to have something special for each of you guys. I, um, As you can see, I, I kept – I screenshotted everybody, too. So uh, I'll be DMing those, those people for um, – for some addresses to send them something, some nice stuff for my NHL collection. Yeah, I love the Adam Graves one, the Rangers yeah. one. Obviously, the Hartford Whaler stuff is classic. So it launches and the Blue the- Crew. I'm coming. That's the uh, the the Believe uh, Rangers podcast. Okay, are you coming uh, on? That one? I have to come on that one, and I think if they're in town, they should come out and do something with us at the uh, NHL store on the 29th. But that's a whole other conversation. So the 29th NHL store, mm-hmm. the uh, Black Ice uh, line gets revealed. Start now- Black Ice, and it's 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 from 2 to 6. It's going to be a nice, you know, we'll have entertainment there, nice DJ. Um, I got to get Damian Woody out, too, because he's a big Islanders fan. Is Messier going to be there? Um, we're working on We're efforting that. And my good friend, Don LaGreca, who um, is the play-by-play radio uh, voice of the Rangers, is <clears throat> participating in our, our campaign, our Black Ice campaign. Um, I got some really cool stuff. Um, oh, I, well, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of sneak peek not video wise, but tell you this 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 crazy idea I had, and it actually happened. So, uh, one of our coworkers at the Giants, Nicole Kelly, has two young sons that I've known since they were kids. Really good hockey players, really good. Then I have okay. a friend of mine who drives a boar's head, the Thuman's meat truck, right? Okay. Wow, this is he played in high school. Nikki Sticks. Nikki's about four Folks, foot only ten. from New Jersey. This this could only this is <laughs> out of central casting in New Jersey. Nikki Sticks, right. who drives a boar's head meat truck, was a really good hockey player. Yes. Like and something like the so start I of got, a Billy Joel song. I got Devin and Derek, and Derek is called the brother. And I'm like, okay, here's here's what I like to do. I like to get these three guys, average Joes. To have Don LaGreca call a one timer for them. Okay. Now, I got Nikki Six that pulls up in his vintage 1989 
Camaro I uh, uh, Z28. Okay. The brothers are in the locker room. They meet up for the first time. They put this play together in their head. And they just go out on the ice and make it happen. And Don LaGreca is calling a one-timer for those guys. So uh, we had a lot of fun on that that um, video and photo shoot. All done in the Black Ice Collection, no less. And shout out to the New Jersey Devils because they, in the NHL, because they gave us access to the um, RWJ Barnabas training center which oh, is their their practice ice right next to it right next to the next to the arena and um they gave us whatever we needed and it was just phenomenal i can't wait to start showing those pictures now will the my final question does the line you do it at the nhl store on mm -hmm. november the 29th you have a four hour mm -hmm. sort of unveiling the, what about online the, when does it go online nhl.com um, uh, the garden fanatics, uh, it goes online on the 29th as well. And it wow. may, it may drop a week, uh, the week earlier. I'll let you guys know. I'll post that. Just uh, keep your eye on my Twitter. Okay. There you go. All right. So well, a little black ice talk, a little giant, yeah. a little Tommy DeVito, who probably would have fit perfectly in your video, he would uh, have. is now the starting quarterback of the New York giants from Don Bosco. How do we like to end it? Tell a friend to tell a friend. Believe, Believe in, in Giants. In giants.